I'm just in my bedroom and the floor below me, I can hear Ryan shouting. It's good now, but you want it green, you want better. No, it's gone down, you want it more. Ryan? Yeah? What's all the shouting about? Well, what we're doing Yeah. Is... No, no good! Ryan. No! We're trying to get better 4G signal. So there's an antenna on the roof. Yeah. And I'm telling Billy if the signal's good or bad. No, no good! So where's Billy? Billy's on the roof in the let's chair. Have look, let's have a look. Yeah, good. Not green yet, but good. Can't see him at all, look. No. Where is it? Oh, you've got a mouth on you, ain't you, Ryan? Bloody yeah, hell. sorry. <laughs> yeah, good. <laughs> 52 megabytes. 52 megabytes, Ryan. Really good, and it's green. Keep it. Does this mean we're going to uh, be able to upload YouTube videos faster? It means we're going to be able to upload YouTube videos instantly. Instantly? In my dreams, yeah. <laughs> 20 megabyte uh, uh, upload, really good. Um, right, let me check. I'll leave them to it. As long as my uh, videos upload quicker, I'm uh, well happy with all the noise you're making, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. You can shout as loud as you like. Yep, it's green, really good. <laughs> right, calm down. Success. 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 I need to actually finish this door. It's obviously it's taken two episodes so far to, to just sand it off. But today is lovely, uh, really nice weather. There's no wind, it's sunny, uh, so I can actually bring the door back outside. But I'm, I'm not going to try and carry it myself again. That was just ridiculous. But uh, I think Sean's here, so if I can get Sean to help me carry the door out, we're going to take the, um, the bottom part that's all rotten, we're going to dig out all the old rotten pieces, and we're going to repair it with some polyester putty. So let's go and see what my dad and Sean are up to. Hello? Hello? You alright? Uh, I need some help to get that door back outside. Yeah, no problem. Have you got any Velcro sticky uh, sanding pads? I have, but they're round ones. Well, you can cut them to I can the cut shape. them to the shape, yeah. Just put them on yeah, that would be a good idea. Thank you for bringing that, Sean. So I've got the putty to repair the door. It's a polyester filler. Uh, and it comes in two parts, but I'll show you how I use that in a minute, but we need to get the door out first, so. Do you want this end or that end? That's the heavier end, that one. Is that all right? Yeah. You can just lay it on the floor out here for now until I get the trestles. Put it over here. Got it? Yeah. All right, let's get the trestles. Now that you said it's teak, I can see it looks like the garden furniture. Yeah, that's right. Same colour. That bit's, um, that's, uh, that's oak. Yeah, that's not that's not the same wood. They've used a different piece there. Yeah. They probably just used what they had lying about. Extension lead. Yeah. Right, let's go and find an extension lead. I think there's an extension lead in the basement. There usually is. Let's have a look. Right. Extension lead. There's one here. 
hope Billy doesn't miss it. It doesn't seem to be used for anything. It's a nice long one, so we can take that and uh, get to work. Actually, what tools have we got lying about that I can use? I could do with a chisel to get, there's like loads of rotten, loose bits of wood. If I try and put polyester putty on loose bits of wood, it's never gonna stick, so. Oh, what is that? That's a chisel, that'll work. Right, let's get the extension lead. Do some work, because the last video, basically, I spent the whole video explaining what I was gonna do and actually didn't do anything, so apart from sand a few bit of bits of paint off, so maybe today we can actually get some work done. Right. Oh, is there a cup of tea going? There could be a cup of tea going. I'd love a cup of tea. If you get me a chance in a bit. That's oh, perfect. Yep, perfect. Thanks, Sean. All right, there we go. I'm gonna need a vacuum cleaner. But luckily, I have one in here. What do they call these in France? Asp aspirator. <laughs> so all of this wood is rotten. So it's all got to come out. It's gonna get a lot worse before it gets any better. But you'll see something that me and Billy discovered. It's actually a, um, a polyester putty. It's used for repairing like, car body work and stuff like that. But we used it just because it's all we had one day lying around. And actually it's fantastic. But you've got to get all the loose stuff out first. All these loose bits out of here. You'll see very shortly how good this stuff is. I think that's enough. What about this end? I think that's good. Right, let's get this vacuum cleaner on. Clear up our mess. Actually, I've noticed a lot of people in the comments of the videos kept saying to me, don't paint the door, it's beautiful, it's teak, oil it. It is a lovely piece of wood, but it's not actually all teak. As my dad pointed out earlier, these two panels here are teak. This one is oak. Even if I um, treated it, it'll, it'll always be a bit of a different colour. I'll have to try and stain that to match the right colour. But also, um, there's no way I can fill like all of the, the, you know, the gaps and stuff with a filler because you'll always see it. Um, and actually, I don't think the windows are teak either, because the, the doors and the windows have got to match. So I don't think it'd be good to have oak. I mean, the oak windows, they'll have to be painted. So it wouldn't look right if I painted just the windows, but let the door wood, it just wouldn't, wouldn't match. So I'm going to paint it. And at least I know that it's protected. And if somebody wants to sand it back in the future, after I'm done with the place and have a teak door, then they're more than welcome. But I want green doors and windows and the gate as well, that'll all be the same colour. So it'll all be, it'll all match. So it's gonna be painted, unfortunately. But it's gonna look great, so trust me. Right, so there's quite a, a large gap between this, um, this bottom piece of wood and here. Uh, so when the putty goes in, obviously it's quite a large space for it to fill. So sometimes if you just put it straight in there, obviously that wood's a bit soft. It's not going to stick to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some nails through here so that when that putty goes in, it will go around the nails and it'll act as a reinforcement to stop it from coming back out. So we'll give it a go anyway. Yeah, that works. Let's try this one here. See, look, it's got something to anchor to now. Got another one. The nails are so soft. Useless. It works in the same principle as if you, you know, when you 
pour concrete, they put like um, steel reinforcement bars in it. Works exactly the same way. There you go, you can see all those little nails in there. When I put that polyester putty in there, that is going to give it all something to anchor to. I wonder if I could probably even get another one in there, to be honest. We like to try and make do with what we've got. I think it's nicer to save something than replace it. Obviously it'd be great if this door wasn't going to be painted, if it was just bare, bare teak, then it'd be nice to get a new piece of teak to put on the bottom, but it's going to be painted, so. Well, once that putty goes in there, it's never going to come out. Done. All I've got to do now is mix up some putty. All these little nails are going to be entombed in the putty now. Um, and they're just going to act as something for it to grip hold of. Because it, obviously, if I just put it straight in there, it's only going to stick to the wood on either side. There's nothing to reinforce it. There's no reason why it can't just come out, the piece that's been filled. So uh, that's going to act as reinforcement and it'll never come out. So it looks a bit strange, but it's going to work. We just need to get this mower and chuck it out because it's going to the it's going to the tip. It doesn't work anymore. What's that? Got it. Where's it going? In the trailer. Yeah. All right. You got it, Sean. Yeah. Got it. Put it down. Put it down. Yeah. But he's had the engine off of it and everything. But you put the engine on it. Oh, oh yeah, that was it. He bought it without the engine. Put a new one on it. Yeah. Still useless. It's got a bigger one now. Ready? Oh, a bit more. Just like the top of the tiles. Well. Hang There we go. There we go. Right, oh, goodbye, mower. <laughs> there was a competition for the ugliest mower at a chateau. This one would definitely win it. State of it, no, it's a helicopter now. <laughs> right. Yeah. Rest in peace. That's not going to come off, no, it's enough weight in it. You can barely lift it. No. <laughs> Here, oh. <laughs> Bloopers. Bloopers. Right. So, we have our putty. We have our peroxide catalyst. Um, and this stuff's not great to work with. It's, it's really sticky. It's like sort of, it's like trying to um, to use peanut butter to fill a crack. But uh, it works quite well once it's set. Just got to open it first, though. So this is our putty. You can see it's quite quite sticky stuff, um, and it'll stay liquid like that until you mix the peroxide with it. So we put the peroxide catalyst in and give it. A really good stir. Oh, here we go. That's handy. I've got a little stick on hand. I can just use that to mix it. It's quite hard to tell if it's mixed in now because it's all the same colour. It's usually all right. This stuff actually sets really quickly. So you don't have a lot of time to work with it. You've probably got about 15 minutes maximum time to work with this. 
But the great thing is it actually sets really quickly. So within about half an hour to 40 minutes, I can actually start sanding this stuff. As I said before, this stuff's actually for repairing um, car body work, like dents and, and rusted areas. But it sticks to anything. Well, this will stick to concrete, uh, glass, um, wood, anything you want it to. So we just ended up using it one day by accident and we discovered that it was actually fantastic. So it's time I just started putting it in there. Now it's going to be a bit of a mess until it's all sanded back, but it's great stuff. Just keep working it in. And as I said, it's going to look a mess until it's actually finally sanded back. But this will repair all of the cracks, all of those areas where it's all damaged. But it's not the easiest stuff to work with because it's a texture, or I can only describe it as sort of like a runny peanut butter. But it works. You'll see. <laughs> Look, this stuff has already started to set. Look, it's so fast. I think it's because I'm working with it in a warm day. So it is going off quicker because basically the reason this stuff actually go goes off is it's like a sort of thermochemical reaction. You can feel the stuff actually gets hot as it's setting or curing. There's a helicopter. Well, that whole tin wasted. It's set too quickly. The next tin I'm gonna actually use much less uh, of the catalyst because that just set far too quickly. So when you use this stuff in the winter when it's quite cold, it actually sets really slowly. So using it in direct sunlight probably isn't a good idea, but oh well. It's actually quite cheap. It's probably about four euros a tin, this stuff, so it doesn't matter. You don't need to worry about too much about getting it neat when you apply it because it sands so easily. There's always a bit of a panic with this because it actually sets really fast, so you don't have a lot of time to work with it. Obviously, it would be nice to, you know, to have ages to spend perfecting it and getting it really smooth, but you have to just literally like just whack it on and tidy it up later. Otherwise, you'll end up using loads and loads of tins of it. Looks a right mess, doesn't it? Just wait and see till the end. Right, just got to let it set, and then we can start remodeling it. Sort of, uh, putting the old shape back that used to be there. Right, so the putty setting, that's not going to be set for another half an hour. Um, everyone uh, in the comments of the videos keeps saying, can you show us inside the little chapel? I, I did show back in the very first episode, I showed uh, inside the chapel, but a lot, some people might not have seen that. So should we go and have a look in the chapel? Let's go and have a look. If you follow me, so there it is, Chateau de la Bamagnée's own private chapel. It actually predates the chateau. We're not sure exactly how old it is, um, but this chateau actually was uh, reconstructed um, at the end of the 19th century. Uh, there was an original chateau here, which was not as tall as this one. Uh, and it wasn't as ornate, but the chapel was actually dated from the original chateau that was here. So let's go and have a look inside. Now the style of this chapel is completely different to the chateau. The, the chateau is, is kind of a, um, a late Gothic revival. Um, it's a kind of, kind of quite a simplified Gothic style. Um, this is, is completely different. This is like a Romanesque. You can tell by the, um, the, uh, these columns here with the, um, the capitals on the top and the, uh, the round arches. Because in the chateau, you actually have um, the more Gothic pointed arches. So this is a Romanesque style. I'm not sure if it's a, uh, a little bit neoclassical, um, but I would probably say it's more Romanesque. But actually the inside is Gothic, so I'll show you in here. We've got a lovely solid oak door. Um, should probably do with sanding back and revarnishing actually. Um, and the chapel actually has its own bell. 
So it'd be cool people to uh, worship. Up here, you've actually got these, um, these Gothic vaults, and they're done with lime plaster. So the, um, the style of the, the chapel inside doesn't match the outside, actually. But the windows are, they have round, rounded arches, the windows. So it's kind of a, a mixture. So maybe the interior was, was uh, renovated at some point and remodeled. When we first moved here, this stained glass window uh, was, was in a, a really bad state. The whole top of the window um, was, had detached and was actually just hanging on by a little thin piece of lead. Um, so I had to take the whole window out um, and cut new pieces of glass uh, and repair it. And I'd never repaired a stained glass window before. I had to sort of learn on the job. So I uh, watched a few YouTube videos and ordered some uh, some pieces of uh, equipment and lead and stuff from uh, from the internet and just had a go and actually it's been there for almost three years now and hasn't fallen out and it's, yeah, it's still in one piece. Actually I didn't have the pieces of coloured glass that I needed uh, which I probably should have ordered but actually what I did is I used like a glass paint to, to paint the missing piece the right colour. Uh, it looks okay. It, um, it, it, you know it's, it's still there, it's in one piece, at least, uh, at least it's not going to fall out. The problem is with these windows, they're in a bit of a state, so uh, the rest of them actually need repairing. So this is the chapel's altar, and you've got the little um, tabernacle here. Now, it used to open, but the key has got stuck, so it probably needs a bit of oil or WD-40. But on it you have, um, what's this, the Lamb of God, I think. The Lamb of God here, um, and you've got these beautiful carvings. You've also got down here, you have um, poor Jesus, he's uh, not in a good state. He's um, obviously suffered some water damage over the years. Also, in the sides here, you have another little statue. And this is, oh, she's not in there very well. This is Saint Elizabeth. Um, she's in good condition. She looks quite happy there. She's got her little loaves of bread. And also, just over here, you have St. Anne, just here. Let's try and get the cobwebs off of her. Yep, so you've got St. Anne, St. Elizabeth, you've got Jesus, and you've got Mary in the middle. These stained glass windows are actually by quite a famous stained glass maker. Um, and his name was uh, Lucien Lebrun, um, and he was from Tours. Um, and he was a famous stained glass window maker, and him and his son as well, actually. So we're not sure if this is by the father, Levin, or the son. Um, these are from 1880. So we think the chapel may date from about, about that time, just before, the cha uh, just before the chateau was rebuilt. They probably had, had this chapel built. They tell a story. This one is um, St. Francis of Assisi. Uh, and I'm not exactly sure what his story is, but there he is, that's St. Francis of Assisi, and he's in, the, I'm not sure if he's in a grotto or the forest somewhere, uh, because obviously you can see there's like a bit of a lake and a stream here, uh, and he is praying to a uh, crucifix there. So that's how you know it's St. Francis of Assisi, because of the crucifix there. Um, and also, over here, now this is my favorite window in the whole chapel. When I first moved here, I absolutely fell in love with this window, just because of the way it looks. I love the colors. You've got this beautiful Gothic um, carpet here or tapestry. And you've got the beautiful red of Jesus' um, robe there and his blue cloak. Um, and this is actually uh, Margaret Mary of Alicot. Uh, and I didn't realise this. Somebody actually saw the very first video and left a comment and told me that this is, this is Margaret Mary of Alicot. And she is, um, she is here. She's with Jesus. And Jesus is revealing to her um, the sacred heart, which you can see here. Um, little heart there with a cross and some flames. Um, and the interesting thing about this is that um, the, basically, Mary Margaret of Alacoc, her feast day is the 16th of October, which is my birthday. So it's funny that I was drawn to this window and I didn't realise it was her feast day was the same day as my birthday. So this is, I call it now, my birthday window. Um, so there you go, it's absolutely beautiful. And this one was... Uh, made by Lucien Leopold Levin and from Tours, uh, made in Tours, and it was dated 1883. So it's very old, it's about 136 years old, I think. We've got some goodies behind here, actually. I'll show you. There's an old cupboard in here. Let's move that light fitting. 
an old cupboard. So what have we got hiding in here? We've got a little Jesus there. Obviously he came from a crucifix. I don't know where the crucifix is. Some old books. What's this? Missiles. So these are the missiles. I think that's how you say it. Are these are Catholic stories, um, and people would have read these years ago and learned them off by heart. Um, it's probably a shame. Don't people probably don't read these these days? Um, stigmatas. Uh, the stigmata of Saint Saint Francis. Saint Francois. Uh, Saint Francis. Yeah. That's obviously a little story. There's quite a few of them actually. Missiles. Criticism de Fidels or whatever. What's this? Another missile. What's in this one? Let's have a little look. Oh, look! Somebody's pressed a piece of fern in there. I wonder how long that's been in there. Could have been in there a hundred years. Um, le, the Christ resurrected. Nous entrons avec lui. His Christ resuscitated and brings us with him. So usually these would have been given as gifts to people, you know, their, their Holy Communion or their Confirmation. They would have carried these around with them and they would have learned the stories of the saints and uh, um, different stories from the Bible. That's your, uh, that's your 19th century iPad there or your iPhone. No, it wasn't YouTube back in the day or, you know, things to read. You, you carried your little book with you and you read the story. Life was simpler back then. There's always little treasures to be found. If you look, put them back in there. At least they're dry. I don't know how long they've been there. There we go. Two little treasures. Oh, look at this. <laughs> don't know where that's from. I might have sat on top of the altar at one point. The globe. This is to represent Christ's dominion over the earth, I think. Because you've got the cross, the crucifix, and the globe. I think that's what it means. I could be wrong though. Put that back there. So there you go, that's the uh, chapel. It's, it's in need of some TLC. I wouldn't say it needs full restoration, but it needs a little bit of work at some point. A lot of this plaster needs repairing, but yeah, it's nice to have it. Uh, obviously, because it's here, it's our responsibility to take care of it. You know, we wouldn't want it to be lost for future generations. So we'll have to give it some attention at some point, but. If I finish the gardener's cottage first, then we can think about this. There you go.